Hello coding enthusiasts, welcome back to our channel. I hope you're ready for part 2 of our series on mastering player movement in Unity. In this session, we will be focusing on two main areas. Firstly, we will update our running state so that our player character faces in the direction of movement. And secondly, and this is the fun part, we're going to dive into Mixamo. For those who may not know, Mixamo is a fantastic tool where we can download and import animations and even characters into our game. We'll choose our character from Mixamo, import it into Unity and set up our animator to bring our game to life. Now, let's not waste any more time and dive straight into Unity. Let's start by opening our player running state script. We'll begin by updating our player's movement so that they face the direction of movement. This is an essential part of making our character's movement feel more natural and immersive. First, let's create a new method called apply rotation. This method will be responsible for adjusting the orientation of our player to align with the direction of movement. Now, let's assign the movement value from our input handler to new vector3, which we'll call movement. This vector3 will store the direction our player is moving in. Next, we'll check if movement is not equal to vector3.0. This step ensures that we are only applying rotation when the player is moving. Within this if condition, we're going to use quaternion.lookRotation. This function generates a quaternion that rotates our player to face the direction of the movement vector. Now, if we simply assign this quaternion to our player's rotation, the change would be instantaneous. It would make our player snap to the new direction, which isn't what we want. Instead, we're going to use quaternion.slurp. This function smoothly interpolates between our player's current rotation and the desired rotation, based on a step size. Notice that we're multiplying by player state machine that rotation speed. This is a new variable we need to add to our player state machine script. It will control how quickly our player turns. Now let's create that public rotation speed and initialize it to 5. You can adjust the value later to get the feel of rotation you want for your player. Great, the final step in our script is to call the apply rotation method inside our update logic method so that the rotation logic is executed in every frame when the player is running. Let's dive back into Unity to see this in action. Go ahead and hit play. Observe how our player capsule now moves more naturally. It's rotating smoothly to always face the direction of the movement. This level of polish really adds to the quality of our game and enhances player's experience. It's about to get even better. Let's head over into Mixamo and bring some character and animations into our game. Moving on, let's now add a touch of personality to our game. We'll be introducing an archer, a choice that will serve our RPG game well by adding complexity and more entertainment. The archer offers versatility in terms of learning about different states as well as providing diverse combat options. From long range bow shots to close range swordplay, we'll have a lot to work with. So start by searching for archer in the search box on Mixamo. What we're specifically looking for is the Longbow Locomotion Pack. This pack offers a set of 12 interesting animations that would be a great addition to our game right off the bat. Click on download and a new window pops up. Here you'd want to adjust the frames per second to 60 for smoother animations. Let's leave the rest of the settings as they are. And hit download. Once the download is completed, it's time to import it into Unity. In Unity, let's create a new folder in our project directory called Animations. Navigate inside this folder and simply drag and drop the files you've just downloaded. Voila! We've successfully imported our Archer animations into Unity. Excellent! With the files imported into Unity, it's time to work on some tweaks to our model. Let's start by dragging and dropping the model into the scene. But there's a small hiccup, the textures of the model aren't displayed correctly. But not to worry, we can easily fix this. Click on the character file in the animation folder and let's check out some settings in the inspector. 
First off, go to Material Creation Mode and select Standard Legacy. Then head over to Location and select Use External Material Legacy. Under Naming, choose the Model Name plus Models Material. Now click Apply. As you may notice, not much has changed. But a new Materials folder has appeared in our Animation folder. But we're not done yet. Go back to Material Creation Mode in the Inspector and select None, then click Apply. Great. Now let's delete the Material folder and select our Character Model again. In the Inspector, switch Material Creation Mode back to Standard Legacy and click Apply. A window titled Normal Map Settings will pop up. Click Fix Now and there you have it. Our model now has all the materials and textures and looks great. Alright, let's continue. First off, we need to unpack this prefab. Go into the hierarchy panel, right click on the game object, navigate to prefab and select unpack completely. Nice. Now let's rename this to player. Let's now look at what we need to add to this model by referencing our capsule that we've created in previous episodes. Okay, so we need a player input, a player state machine, a character controller and an input handler. Let's go back to our newly created player. First, add a player input. Next, drag and drop the player state machine and the input handler script onto the player. Also, don't forget to add a character controller. Now, it's time to bid farewell to our capsule. Go ahead and remove it from the scene. Great, now click again on the player, right click on its transform and click reset. Let's double click on our new player in the hierarchy panel so we can see it better. If you click on the character controller, you'll notice the collider is not positioned correctly. Go to center and change the Y axis value from 0 to 1. Ok, let's hit play to see what we have. Well. We definitely have the model in our game, but it's a bit amusing to see it always staying in the T position. Don't worry, we're not done yet. Alright, let's continue. Go to our player in the Unity Editor and add a new component named Animator. Now navigate to the Animation folder, right click, select Create, then Animation Controller. Let's rename it Player Animator. Now click on our player and drag and drop the player animator into the controller. Ok, now you can see I have this window called animator. If you do not have it, navigate to window, animation and select animator. You can dock your animator window wherever you like. In the animator window, select our player animator controller from the animation folder. Excellent, you can now see three nodes there. Let's right click in the animator window, go to create state and select from new blend tree. Now let's double click on the blend tree. This takes us inside the blend tree. To go back to the base layer, click on the base layer tab on the top left corner. Now click on the blend tree and in the inspector there is a section called motion. Click the plus sign and select add motion field. Here we need to add an animation. First. Let's see what we have in the animation folder. Ok, we have this thing called standing idle 01 import settings. Let's open it up using this arrow here. Inside we have two things. One is the animation and the other one is the Mixamo rig. Click on the animation and press command D on Mac or control D on Windows to duplicate this animation. Let's rename it idle. Now remove the standing idle import settings thing. Back into the animator window, select blend tree and drag and drop your new idle animation into the first motion we've created a moment ago. In the bottom left, we have a preview window to see how our character will look like. If you don't have it, you can drag this two line area where it says blend tree and it will open it up for you. Great, now that we have our first motion, let's add the second one. Click on the plus sign again and add motion. Like we did for idle, go to animation folder, find the standing run forward import setting, duplicate the animation, rename it to run and drag and drop it into our last motion. 
Now, let's talk a bit about parameters. In the animator window to the left, you see the parameter called blend. Let's rename it to speed. Be careful how you type it as it's case sensitive and we will use this variable name to control the speed. All right, I think it's time to go back into VS Code and do some coding. Let's do it. Let's continue our journey. In the player state machine script, let's add a public variable of type animator. Name it animator controller. We'll set it up so that we can get it, but not set it. Next, we'll use the awake method to assign the animator component to the animation controller. Perfect. Now, let's head over to the player idle state. In the update logic method, we'll call player state machine dot animator controller dot set float and we're going to set the speed to zero. Don't worry about these magic variables. We'll clean up this in a future video. Great. Now we head over to the player running state. In the update logic method at the end, let's add the same line but set the speed to 1. Before we test it, there is one small thing we need to tweak in our animation. Go to the animation folder and double click on our run animation. Excellent. Let's expand Mixamo rig, hips and select position and then position.z. We need to remove this from the animation. In the preview, you saw that the animation was moving forward. However, we need the animation to run in place and our collider to move. With position.z selected, delete all the keyframes on the same line. Finally, let's select the run animation and select loop time. This means that the animation would always play in a loop. Let's do the same for the idle animation. Fantastic work. Now it's time for some testing. Awesome, now our character is playing animation, moving and rotating in the direction of movement. In the next video, we will be adding even more states to our character. Now, if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, please like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Happy coding everyone.